Hi everybody, so this video essentially acts as an extension to the videos done on the diffusion barriers because we will be dealing with stochastic barriers and as introduced in, in this pioneering paper, one can extend the theory for the diffusive barriers also to stochastic um, setting. So this is done, um, there's a dedicated section to it, which is mathematically a bit involved. So we'll not go through all the details of it, but essentially here, um, this section explains how one can extend the theory uh, for the diffusion uh, barriers to the to the theory for the for the stochastic barriers. What is essentially here is that you model the the um, particle motion. So you assume basically that there are uncertainties in the particle motion. So the velocity field that you have is subject to some stochastic process, and the motions of particle trajectories are then typically modeled by um, such an equation, which is a diffusive uh, iter process. Now, B is simply uh, acts as a, as a Wiener process. So this matrix V simply stands for the Wiener process and B is uh, also referred to the diffusion matrix. Now we'll see how this then translates to um, our setting for diffusion barriers. And in fact, it's actually very simple. So the scripts also, so if I go back, the scripts are used for the for the computing the diffusive barriers also extend to the stochastic barriers. So these are essentially the same, the same codes that I was using for the diffusive barriers. Um, and no, no major changes actually, they are basically the same. Now again, we will be dealing with the Gulas region. Um, I might inform you that um, this script might take a while to compute because first of all, we've chosen a very long time interval to show these um, these these structures more uh, extensively. And second, um, we will need to compute at some point. So we'll need to do a, a Monte Carlo simulation of these trajectories for the simulation. And this might take a while. The good thing is that in order, in order to compute these stochastic barriers, you do not need to do any, any um, Monte Carlo simulation. So that's a big advantage. You In order to compute the barriers, you don't need to do any Monte Carlo simulation. The reason why we do the Monte Carlo simulation then is to show um, that these barriers indeed inhibit the transport of these stochastic uh, trajectories, essentially. So as I already said, you model the particle trajectories uh, in, in a deterministic component. So this first part is simply the velocity field that you have, which in our case will be the Aviso data set, so the one that we've already used, and a stochastic component, which is, which is this part here. Um, X is of course, the, of course the, the position vector of a particle, V is the velocity. Um, this this W, uh, so this yeah this this W is um, is essentially the Wiener process, and it has the following diffusion matrix. Um, now for the as you will see in the paper, so as you will see as you go through this paper, the the um, you can apply the same theory that you use for the diffusive. Uh, for computing diffusive barriers, you can also apply this to, to stochastic barriers by simply taking this diffusivity tensor D, which we already know from the diffusive barriers, and 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 computing this as simply one half times the diffusivity tensor B times B transpose. So that's it. The 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 B matrix that you have here, which which is part of the stochastic process, translates to this diffusion tensor D in the diffusive process. And once we have this D then the computation of the of these stochastic barriers is essentially the same as the computation of the diffusive barriers by simply setting this D here. Now, in our case, we simply model the B term as square root over two. And it's basically, uh, it has no, no anisotropic un component. And of course, actually, if you plug this one, this expression here into here, then you see that the diffusion um, tensor that we have is essentially again the the isotropic um, isotropic one, so it's it's unity, and then you can simply follow the same procedure and the same steps that we were using uh, to compute the diffusion barriers in a Lagrangian setting. Um, then, in order to compare, so once we do this, we get structures, and the structures, if I if I show them, um, the structures are essentially this one here. Okay, in order to compute the structures. As I said, it's the same process as we have been doing for the diffusion barriers. So it's exactly the same stuff, no, no difference. And then you get these two diffusion barriers here. 
And then, of course, we want to simulate whether these barriers here indeed inhibit the transport of these stochastic trajectories. So what you do is you basically take these two diffusion barriers and you place particles in it in there. Now, you place the particles in inside the core of these barriers. So basically, you take the outermost of these of these barriers and you place particle inside them. And then you do a, a Monte Carlo simulation. So essentially, you you simulate you simulate these um, trajectories uh, in the Lagrangian frame. So you basically assume that uh, you only you only model basically the stochastic component. And just and just take a look at the stochastic part of the trajectory. So these, as whenever we, whenever we'll be doing the simulation, these barriers they will not be moving because we are looking at them in the Lagrangian frame. Um, and, but we will just be so the the particles will just be affected by the stochastic component. This is you will you will see that later. And then in order to compare these structures that we are getting with some randomly placed barriers in the flow, so we will basically take these two structures, translate them. By by a fixed by a fixed um, by a fixed distance and put them somewhere else and then seed structures uh, seed particles in there and do the simulation with these particles in there. You will see that um, these artificial structures that we created will not inhibit the um, the um, the stochastic particle trajectories, but the stochastic particle trajectories will in fact diffuse through the structures. To do this, um, of course, we need to introduce them on the simulation. So this is done here, where you basically simulate particle trajectories using a stochastic uh, differential uh, integration. Um, so that's that's pretty much it, where you need to define these bunch of parameters. Now, this B naught is simply the inverse of the gradient of the flow map times the B matrix. Okay. And we will uh, again simulate these these trajectories for some particles which were inside these these uh, elliptic stochastic barriers and particles which are basically randomly placed in the fluid. Um, the tricky part here is that you need to simulate these structures. So in order to simulate these structures, essentially we need to compute the stochastic trajectories. We do this in this in this setting here. Um, they require, of course, the gradient of the flow map. So we need to compute the gradient of the flow map first. This is done. This is done in this section. And this might seem a bit involved. However, it is, it is pretty straightforward. So it's just like computing stochastic trajectories. Uh, nothing, nothing super fancy. It's just, it just really computing stochastic trajectories using this SD int ETO uh, integration. Um, once we've done that, we can then simulate these structures. And again, so actually, let me, let me pause this and, and replay this from the beginning. So of course, if you want to see the difference even more strongly, then you would need you would need to um, to place much more particles in there. However, um, since I don't want to, since the script already took some time to run, I didn't want to wait too much too much longer. Um, I I didn't put too many particles in there, um, but in case you want to put more particles in there to see the difference even more then I would just simply suggest that you put more particles in, inside these structures. So these red particles are basically the, um, the or, so these red particles inside these, these, these um, black curves are basically the particles seeded inside, inside the stochastic barriers, which were identified by the algorithm. And on the other hand, I also placed um, blue particles inside these dashed closed curves which are basically randomly placed blue particles in the flow. And as you will see, okay, so initially there is no big difference. Of course, these particles move, have some stochastic component, but over time, you will see that these particles will tend to diffuse outward, right? So for example, here is a strong leakage, whereas these barriers inhibit the, the stochastic transport of these particles. And actually, if I, if I go back to the last snapshot, you can see, that these particles, so these structures here, the particles placed inside these structures, they diffused quite a bit throughout these structures, whereas, whereas the particles inside these structures remained uh, fairly, fairly, uh, so remain inside these structures. And uh, the, of course, there might be some tiny amount of diffusion going on, or actually, yeah, there might be some tiny amount of diffusion going on, but um, it's not, it's not uh, major. So if you compare the, the diffusion between these two structures, you can see that here the particles really got out of these barriers, whereas here they remained they remained fairly um, tight and inside these these structures. 
with that, so the, I did not go through the ex explicit steps of all of the computation simply because it's essentially the same as as in the diffusive um, barrier setting. So I I, I thought that it's it's a bit um, it's not necessary since you can go through the through the diffusive barrier setting and and it's exactly the same step, really exactly the same step. In case you have questions regarding the theory, theory then either email me or um, make sure to first check out this paper um, by Professor George Haller and his um, co-workers. Um, if you have questions regarding the implementation of this, then again, just feel free to drop me a mail. With that, I thank you for your attention and um, look forward to the next video.